today we are going to continue with our treasure box series of tutorials. However, don't worry, if you didn't get a treasure box, which many of you did not, you can still do these projects because everything that I'm going to use today will be available either on my website or Shirley's website at budgetbeads.shop. So don't worry about that. If you like to make these, they make beautiful Christmas gifts, and I know a lot of people are starting to do that right now, and they're very professional looking, really nice pieces. Let me show you close up what we're going to do. We're going to use the little pendant that came in the treasure box. I also have these online, and I will put the um, bail on there for you if you buy one. And um, this is what this looks like. I'm using the triangle beads, the clear triangle beads that came in the box. I also have them on the website. We will be using the 4x4x4 four by four by four cuboid crystals, and this is powder blue. And I do have some of those now, and so does Shirley. We'll be using beading chain and some ending findings, which I'll show you in more detail. We're also going to be making a bracelet. Now this one, I added another color I have on the website too. But this is with the triangle beads. This is a double strand bracelet and I'm going to show you a couple of ways to make them. But this is just really pretty on. It's just gorgeous. Um, excuse my hands, they're all beat up. But it's really, really pretty. So it makes a very elegant, dainty little bracelet that I think anybody would be happy to wear. So let's go ahead and look at these and at the end I'll put them on so you can see them better. But let's go ahead and look and see what we need to use to make these projects and get started. Okay, so this is what we need to do this project. In your treasure box, and if you don't have a treasure box, that's okay, I have them online. You have this pretty little crystal um, teardrop really light blue little and the one in the box will already have a bale on it however you also have this bale included in your box and we're going to switch out that bale for this one if you want to if you don't want to of course you can use this for something else and keep the one that's on there if you would like so we're going to be using the bale the crystal and then <clears throat> we're going to be using the triangle beads that came in the box. Now on the strand it looks like this. These are four millimeter triangle crystals and I've taken my, some of mine off here and we're going to be using some of them. I also have some of the um, 4x4 cuboid crystals, the powder blue that came in the box. Now I know that we've used them in previous tutorials in this box but you should still have a few left. If you do not, I have some on the website if you want some, so that's not a big deal. But you should have a few left. Then we're also going to be adding, those are the things from the box. What we're going to be adding is some beading chain, and I have cut about 18 inches of beading chain. Of course, you can cut that any length you would like. And then I'm going to use some size 1 crimp beads. These are Beetalon, and I recommend that you do get Beetalon. They work the best. They are size 1 round. They work better than the little square ones. You can use the tube ones, and I do show you how to do that on Beading Chain 101. So I suggest you watch that tutorial if you want alternatives to what I'm using today. We are also going to use this really cool little new finding that Shirley has on her website. She bought a bunch of these. They are sterling silver plated, this one is. There's also rose gold and gold, and they are all plated with the real stuff, so they're very nice findings. What it is is it has a clasp, an extender chain, and the crimp tubes to end the beading chain with. So if I separate this, you will see Here's the extender side with the little crimp tube, and here is the clasping side. Ah, come here. It's not cooperating, of course. Here's the clasping side with the little crimp tube, and of course, this is a small um, lobster claw, but if you want a bigger one, you can always put another one on here, but these are very nice and I'll show you how to use these. And I recommend that you go to um, Shirley's website called budgetbeads.shop and I'll put it in captions so you can see. And these are just, they're great. You're gonna love these. So, 
that's what we're going to be using. Now, if you want to end your chain without getting these, then you can use some little clamshells. I show you how to do that on Beading Chain 101. Check that out. It's really easy. These are really easily had. They're very cheap, so you can get these also. But you will also need a couple jump rings and clasping if you're going to use these. But I'm not going to show you in detail because I have a video, like I said, that shows you all the alternative methods to using the beading chain. So check that out and you can do with what you have instead of having to buy a bunch of stuff if that's what you would like to do. So let's go ahead and get started with this. I'm going to move all this stuff aside and I'm going to start with this pendant. Now, if you have the one that already has the little um, uh, pinch bail on it, just open the pinch bail up and take it off. It's a really soft pinch bail. All you have to do is pull on either side and take it off. And then what we're going to do is we're going to modify this one. If you buy it on my website, you, you buy the pendant, I will already have this on there for you so you don't have to do this. But since... Um, I didn't put it on for those that have the box. I'm going to show you how to modify this. The reason is, is that the top of this pendant is pretty small and these little spikies are pretty big. And what you're going to do is you're going to open the bale. I like to put my round nose or chain nose pliers inside the bale, just like this, and then just gently open the pliers and it will open the bale for me, like this. And once you have it open, then you can see the little spikies. They're just a little too long for this pendant. So I'm going to take my um, end cutters here and my flesh cutters, and I'm just going to take about a millimeter. Just be very careful. Go inside on the spiky and just take about a millimeter off. And it'll cut off really easily, just like that. And now I'm going to cut down this side just take a little bit off. You can always take more off if you need to, but you don't want to get too carried away because then you'll render your pinch bail useless and you don't want to do that. So I've shortened these. I could shorten that one. Nah, I think it's... I'm going to shorten it just a tiny bit more. Actually, I don't think I'm going to get too carried away with that. I know it's a little long, though. Okay, so now you can see I have shortened those little spikies, but you don't want to shorten them too much. They need to go into that hole. So I've left one a little bit longer and the other one a little bit shorter. And you just, you just have to be careful. Now this is the hard part here. I'm going to go ahead and close it just a little so I can balance it onto the pendant. I'm going to take my pendant and put it inside and put it on one half the longer spiky that I left here. You can leave them the same size too. I just happen to do that. And then you're going to squeeze it, balance it on one finger and squeeze it into those holes as tight as you can. Sometimes they slide on really nice and neat like mine just did and sometimes they're a little bit of a battle. So just go ahead and put that on there. I'm going to squeeze it down as much as I can and you can see it's on there nicely now. This is a big bale for this little drop, but it still looks really pretty and it works out just fine for the design that I'm going to show you. So this is what you will have now for your focal. Then <clears throat> get your chain. I'm going to move some of this stuff aside. And we're going to have to um, Mod not modify, but we're going to have to make our chain a little bit stiffer so that we can actually work with it. Picking up the beads, especially these little triangle beads, with this chain is difficult because it's a squishy chain and it just, um, it's difficult to pick up your beads. So get one of your little baggies out and then get some glue. Now you can use super glue, you can use um, jeweler's glue, whatever you happen to have. I think E6000 would probably work too. But I've got some GS Hypo, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to treat the ends of my chain to stiffen them. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little bit of my glue on the bag. I'm not using the, the Hypo tip because of course that only works for a little while, then it doesn't work anymore. So mine is not working. I'm putting a little bit on either end here. You can do one end at a time if you would like. You don't have to do them both. 
and then we are going to I, I like to just squish it around in the glue and you only want to go about a half an inch no more than that because otherwise you'll get the end of your necklace too stiff and it'll be weird then after I've done that I'm just going to pick up another one another little baggie and I'm just going to wipe the glue and then I'm going to set it down where there isn't a puddle of glue on my bag here and then wipe this one set it down straight make sure they're not bent and I'm just going to let them sit there and dry for a few minutes and then we'll be back okay so I am back these are pretty well dry now and it just all it does is just see how it's stiff so it stays straight so that I can pick up my beads this side yeah this side is fine too so now what we're going to do is we are going to need four size one beetle on crimp tubes now I do not have these on my website but they're very easy to find so you should be able to find them and let me get you a little closer you can see how tiny they are but we're going to use those to stabilize the focal of our um, necklace so we're going to take the pendant and we're just going to put it in this you can see how big around the bale is we're just going to put it in the bale like this and then put the ends of your chain together and just find the center here and I'm going to do it sideways and you can see let me get you out here you can see that I have put the ends basically together and it doesn't have to be perfect because we will end up trimming those a little bit anyway more than likely to make the match so then we're going to pick up on one side you can see how nice my bead now slides over that we're going to pick up a crimp bead on one side and drop it down then we're going to pick up a crimp bead on the other side and drop it down and then just kind of recenter everything bring these down and recenter your piece by adjusting the ends you can see over here just adjust these ends a little bit whoops yeah Gina that was good okay just like that and then bring your crimp beads in towards the pendant and we're just going to leave like five millimeters in between for the bail so let me get you really close so you can see this and you can see I have a crimp bead on either side and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab my chain nose pliers uh, maybe let's see there they are okay and I'm just going to squeeze those on either side so I'm going to pick this one up a little bit and move it towards the bail just a tiny bit and squeeze it down so let me get you really close so you can see exactly what I'm doing. So you can see I've just squeezed that down. And then I'm going to grab the other one. I'm going to move it in a little bit because I only want about oh five millimeters, not even maybe four, for that bail to be centered on now if it moves out of the way that's okay you can just move it completely out of the way that's fine and then you can see how much room you have in between them now I've got a crimp bead here and a crimp bead here and there's just a few millimeters in between probably about four or five and then I'm just going to move my bail back in between there it's not going to stay at this point that's okay we're not worried about that and then I'm going to pick up a cuboid crystal and I'm going to drop it down on the chain so I've got my little 4x4 cuboid right here I'm going to pick it up on the chain and drop it down and then 
I'm going to pick up another one on the other side and drop it down. Now, as we build this, it will hold the pendant in place pretty well. I mean, if you really jiggle it around and you're crazy with it, it will go over the beads, see, if I really pull on it. But in general terms and in wearing it, it's going to stabilize it and keep it pretty well in place. So let's begin by picking up some crystals on either side. So what I did on the other one is 13 crystals on this side, 13 crystals on this side, then cuboids, and then 13 more crystals, and then cuboids. So all I'm going to do is begin to pick up my crystals with my chain. Now that it's stiff, I can actually pick it up. If you don't stiffen your chain, these are very difficult to pick up. So I'm just going to start picking them up and putting them on here one at a time until I have 13 and then I'll do the other side with 13 and we'll be back. Okay, so now you can see how pretty that is. There's 13 on either side of those little cuboids and I'm just going to pick up another cuboid on either side and drop that down. Just my little accents. If you, you can use anything you want. You could use pearls, you could use a rondelle, you could use whatever. It doesn't matter. I just happen to think that the color of this powder blue with the color of the pendant works really good together. So I'm just, they complement each other really nicely. So that's what I'm doing. I've got oil from my hands on my crystal. So there we go. Now I'm going to put 13 more of my crystal triangles on either side and then another cuboid and we'll be back. Okay. And check out how pretty that is. They just sparkle like crazy the way they're cut. They're so pretty. And I have these in a few other colors too. And it would look really pretty as a necklace without the focal too. You could just go all the way around. You can make sections by crimping them off with two with the crimp beads or not. Um, however you want to do it. You could make the full thing full of them. Um, the whole chain. That it's just, it's a really pretty, elegant, dainty little look. Now, I went ahead and put my 13 crystals here and my cuboid, and now I've dropped on a little crimp bead. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And this is just going to make sure that things stay somewhat stable. Now, I'm not going to lie to you, these little crimp beads can loosen up. So if you want to, you could use a tube and use um, the method that I show you in Beading 101 with your crimp pliers to really crimp it down tight if you would like. Just check out that video and you will see. I hate to keep referring to it, but I don't, I don't want to go through all of those different ways when I've already done it on a video. So if you want to, check that out. That will really help. So I've dropped these down. Now, I want to make sure there's no slack on my sequence of beading here, but I also do not want to push real hard on my beads and crimp it down really tight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put my pliers on my crimp bead. I'm going to push it down to make sure there's no slack. Then I'm going to move away just the tiniest bit and crimp that down really secure. Now, that way, you still have a little bit of movement. If you get it too tight or too loose, then you can just go the opposite way on your crimp bead. Let me see, is that too tight? No, that's okay. But after you squeeze it down, you can see that it's kind of square. Let me get you close. Let's see if that'll focus. No. Focus you, focus you, focus. Hello. There we go. Now, um, you can see how that's kind of square. You can go opposite of the way that you crimped it down, like this with your crimp, with your um, chain nose pliers, and squeeze it again and loosen it up, move it, take it off, squeeze it down again, whatever you'd like. All you have to do is loosen it up by going the opposite direction. I'm going to make sure that's on there really stable. You may want to um, reinforce the bottom ones too. And now I'm going to go to the other side. Let me get out of that close shot there and I am going to grab a hold of the crimp bead with my pliers 
Make sure my chain is arranged nicely. Make sure there's no slack. I can push my beads down and then just move away from that bead just slightly and squish down. That moving away, get, make sure that your necklace isn't really, really stiff. So let's see if I've got enough movement. I think I do. I think I'm okay. Now, if you get them really, really tight, this is gonna, it's not gonna have a lot of flexibility. So you wanna make sure it's not so tight that your beads are making your um, chain just stiff. Okay, so that's basically how you make that necklace. See how that looks like? That That's the front part of it. Now we're going to go to the back part of it. We're going to center that um, pendant. Let me back off so you can see. We're going to center this pendant the best we can and center our focal the best we can. And then look at the ends here. I'm going to cut the ends just a little bit to make them nice and even. Mine aren't too bad, but they're still not completely even. And so let me lay them out. And then I'm just going to cut them right here. Now you don't want to have to cut a lot or you're going to lose your length. However, you're going to gain a little length with your next step and the fact that we have an extender. So now these are the findings that I told you about. There are other ways to end this chain, so definitely check out the other ways on the video I told you about 50 times already. And this is what we're going to do now. This is the clasping end. I am going to pick up the crimp tube on this end in my crimping tool. Now, one side is very flat and one side is kind of curved up. You're going to want to grab a hold in the second divot that's shaped like uh, well, it has kind of a crinkle on one end and a circle on the other. So let me show you. It's the divot closest to the handle, and you can see it's kind of funny shaped. You're going to pick it up in that divot, just like this. Make sure that you're to the end of the crimp tube, and then pick up your chain. Drop your chain in that crimp tube. Make sure you can feel it kind of bottom out so it's all the way in there. I'll get my fingers out of your way. And then just squeeze. And this is what you should have. It creates a little fold right here in the center. You can see that. Now we're going to place the fold sideways. We're not going to go back down straight on top of that. We're going to go sideways in the first divot. So you have this little divot that's round on your crimp tool towards the tip of the tool. We're going to place that so that the two little tubes that we created and the fold are centered. Just like this. So you can see that. And then you're going to squeeze again. Whoops, I slipped. I didn't squeeze, so make sure that that's sideways in there. And the two little tubes are touching the tool, and then squeeze. Now you can see I have a really nice end here. And I'm going to just kind of straighten it up a little bit by squeezing it again here. And look at how pretty that ends that. Okay, so let's do the other side too. Let me back off a little here. Pick up your crimp tube, put it in the divot towards the handle. Make sure that it's flush or even a little bit recessed inside the tool here so that you're at the end of the crimp tube. If this crimp tube is long enough, I'm just going to go flush. And then I am going to put my chain inside the crimp tube. I'm backed off so you can see a little bit better what I'm doing. And I'm going to squeeze. Now I'm going to get close and show you what we've got. We've got this little fold. So it creates a fold in the center and kind of two little tubes on either side of the fold. Then we're going to take that and in this first divot here, we are going to place these two little tubes so that they are sideways 
in that divot, just like this, so you can see, and then we're going to squeeze. And that will bring those two little folds together. And you can see what a pretty little end I have. Now, sometimes they, they crimp really pretty and really perfect, and sometimes you have to kind of doctor them up a little bit by putting it back in the crimp tool in the second divot and just kind of gently modify them slightly. And now this gives you a beautiful, finished, very professional-looking necklace. Let's see what that one looks like. Oh, it's not quite as pretty. I'll doctor that one up a little bit. Your folds sometimes turn out really gorgeous and sometimes they look a little funny. But no one's going to see that. You're seeing under the magnification of my camera, but they look really good, actually. That looks nice. So look at how pretty that ended this necklace very professional looking. You've got a gorgeous ending on your necklace. Let me get you even a, a little closer so you can see. And that's really and here nice. And is the finished piece. And it's really, really pretty. So, let's look at this close up so you can see. Now, like I said, this can fall over the beads, but it generally stays pretty good. I mean, especially if you hang your pieces, if you put them in a pile on your dresser or something, it might move. And these little um, crimp beads, you want to make sure they're nice and secure. You've crimped them very tightly because you don't want them to loosen. You want them to hold everything into place. So make sure they're nice and secure. If you have to crimp them two or three times the same way that you originally did, then do that to weld the metal kind of together with the chain. And that will help. So if you want a more secure way, then check out the other video I told you about, the Beading Chain 101, and you can use a regular crimp tube instead of a little round crimp bead, and you will get a much nicer, um, more secure crimp. But that is what that looks like. Turned out beautiful, and I really like it. I think that I might wear that today. I don't know. But I've made two. So you can see that I made one previously, and I've made this one. And you can see these ones, it's pretty much the same. I kind of spread this one out a little bit more for my bail than this one. But either way, they're still really pretty. I suppose I should probably show you what I'm talking about, huh? So you can see it. But anyway, they turn out really pretty, pretty consistent. So you can make them with different colors. You can put any pendant you wanted on there. Don't put a pendant at all. Just put a bunch of triangle beads on there. It's just, it's really pretty. You could even just do the, the cuboids, whatever you want. So that's what we've done with that. And now I'm going to show you how to make a bracelet like this. And um, I think I may even introduce into, I have some of these really pretty little clasps that are double strand clasped. Let's see if I can find a couple. And we can put that on. And I can also show you how to end it this way. So let me gather my things together and we'll be back and make the bracelet. Okay, for this bracelet, I'm going to use some of these new clasps I just got today. I think they're really pretty. So I'm going to make it a little shorter than I did this one. But I'll give you instructions on how to make it just like this one too, if you don't want to get elaborate and get one of these clasps or, um, you can't or whatever. Um, <clears throat> if you can and you want to, they'll be available on the website. But I have these two strand um, rhinestone clasps. One's ribbon and one's little hearts. I also have some three strand or whatever you'd like. But they're kind of big. So you're going to have to, if you use something like this, you're going to have to make sure you accommodate for your length for your clasping. So this is going to take up at least an inch and a half, if not an inch and three quarters. So I'm going to keep that in mind. Um, I, I have cut two pieces of chain and I cut them, beading chain, and I cut them at nine inches, which is way more than I'm going to need, but just to make sure I have enough to work with. And then um, if you want to use Endings like this one, you'll need a lobster claw and some of your jump rings. So I've got like six millimeter jump rings and I extended it on this side with 
a small one and a couple of bigger ones over here and put a little dangle on it. And so you'll need a few jump rings also for that. I'm going to be using these little crimp ends and these are really nice because they make a really nice ending. It's not so bulky. You can use, like I said, there's other ways to end it. You can use a magnetic clasp or you can use these little um, clamshells, whatever you'd like. But this is really nice and narrow and I will have some of these on my website. I have some in a more silvery color and some in a more platinum color. The platinum ones are a little bit bigger inside than these are. They're one millimeter hole. You can, these are hard to find, so I did find some in platinum, and they're a little different than these, and I'll show you how to use them. They're not much different, but a little bit. So I will have some of those with the beading chain area in on the website if you want to get some of these. So I'm going to use a couple of these little crimp tubes. You can end it other ways, like I said. I'm going to use some of the cuboids and the crystals, the triangle crystals. I'm also going to add, in this one I added blue. These are the magic blue color. I have a few different colors. You can do it all in your clear if you have your box. You should have enough crystals to do it in the clear. Just add some other beads in with it. If you don't have any more cuboids, then add some rondelles or some pearls or whatever you have in your stash to divide it off. So you can see I have cuboids here. I have three here, three here, three here, and three here. I did one side with clear and then blue, and then this side with clear on the inside and blue on the outside. You can do it however you want. If you want to use just all your clear, or if you want to come get some more, you can do that too. Or if you didn't get a box at all, you can still make this. So what we're going to do is I'm going to start by just putting one side of the little crimp tubes on one side of each chain and then I will put some glue on the other side and stiffen it just like we did previously. So these little crimp tubes you do the same way you did with the one that Shirley has. So you will just grab it and put it inside your crimp pliers or your crimp tool. Put it in the second divot, the one closest to the handle. Put it on the flat side so that you can make sure that it's on there. Now, I like to make sure, you can make sure that it's flush or recess it a little bit because these are small and you don't want to go too high up on them. So I recess it just slightly in there, just like that. And then I'm going to turn it so I can actually use it, my hand here. And then take your chain and put it inside the crimp tube. Now these little silver ones, they you can feel it hit the top. On the other ones, the other new ones I got, they are kind of open on the top, so just make sure you don't have chain sticking out the other end, but you do it exactly this way. And you'll see what I mean if you get some. Now, just squeeze. And then you can see I have a nice little fold right there in the middle of that crimp tube. And then I'm going to take my pliers and I'm go or my crimp tool. I'm going to place that in there sideways so that the tubes are touching the crimping tool on either side. I'll turn it over so you can see. And then we're just going to make sure it's in there nice and straight and then squeeze. And now you have a beautiful little ending, just like that. And you're going to do that on both sides. I'm going to go ahead and cut a tiny piece of chain and show you how to do it with the other ones in case you get those if you decide that you want to get some of them. Okay, so I'm going to try the other type that I just got in and see how they work. And I'm going to put the chain in. I put it in my pliers the same way little recessed and now I am going to make sure it's right in the center so that fold will grab a hold of that chain and squeeze. Squeeze tightly. These are a little bit wider than the other ones so you want to make sure that you get that chain centered and you get a nice crimp at the end here. And then you can see my chain is just a little bit 
outside because it was because these are open on the top just make sure your chain doesn't stick way out and then but if it's out some you're going to get a better crimp so just a little bit is okay but not a lot and then we're going to turn it sideways and crimp it again these are a little bit wider so I'm going to go to the bottom of the crimp tube and just kind of make sure that it's conforming to the chain a little bit more by just turning it in my crimp pliers. Now see that did do a really nice crimp. A little bit different process just because it's a little bit different crimp and I have my chain in out a little bit in the top which holds it better but just make sure you don't have to have that much out but I have a little bit more out than I want to but I like to have just a little bit simply because it holds a little bit better on these and now that's a nice tight cramp and it works really well now they will both be on the website one is a 1.5 millimeter hole I think and the other is a one millimeter hole and this one's the light silver and this one's platinum and I will distinguish between the two I'm going to put them both up because I don't know how fast they're going to sell and I want to make sure everyone can get some if they want to but anyway there's they'll be there so that's how you use that one if you get that one and now what I'm going to do is I am going to I'm going to cut just a little bit off this chain because I have a little bit more than I need and make sure it's flush cut and then I'm going to put a little glue on the end just like I showed you for the necklace and let it harden and then I will also put another crimp tube on this other side here and let it harden on this side with some glue and we'll be right back okay so now these are ready I've put my little crimp tubes on both of them and I've hardened the ends of both of them and now I can just start stringing beads on I'm not going to do any little crimp tubing or anything like that with it I'm just going to go ahead and pick up I think I'll start with a cuboid and um, I'm going to use I think clear on one I'm going to make this a little bit different than the last one I'll make some clear on one and then blue on the other or something like that. Um, you can do it however you want. And like I said, you don't have to even use cuboids if you don't want to. They work really pretty with this, but you can, there's all different colors of them too if you like different colors. And there's different color triangles too. So you can use pearls, you can use rondelles, you don't have to use triangle beads even if you don't want to, but I've designed this for the triangle beads just because they look so pretty on beading chain. So I'm just going to go ahead and put some cuboids on this one. On these, if you like the way this looked, I started with the triangle beads and I did 13 and then I did three cuboids and then I did, I think, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then I did nine crystals and then three cuboids and then I just reversed it the colors on this side so um, eight or nine I don't I could have counted that wrong but that's how I did that one on this one I'm just going to kind of change it up a little bit start stringing some stuff on here and then I will come back and show you how I'm going to measure this so that I can use this type of clasping I'll take this one apart and show you how I put it together so if you want to do this one it's very simple okay we'll be right back okay so I have finished one of my strands and I have made it just right at just a little under six inches because I wanted this to be a little over seven inches and my clasping is pretty good size and I'm going to have of course my crimp end and then a couple of jump rings and I wish I had a little bit smaller jump rings these are about four millimeter um, but I don't so we're going to see how that looks, if it looks too much jump ring or what. But I need to leave room for those jump rings for this end and to attach. So this will be just a little over a 7 inch bracelet. So all you need to do is just put on your beads, no matter what you're using. I used 21 of my um, 
triangle crystals on either side of two um, cuboid crystals and three on the ends. Whoops, I only put two on this end, so I'm going to have even a little bit more length than I anticipated, but that's okay. I'm right at six inches, so this will probably be about a seven and a half inch bracelet, which is fine for me. But you can go ahead and judge it by putting it on the bracelet here. Now, if you're not going to use a big clasping, if you're just going to put the ends on and jump them and put them on some jump rings, then go ahead and make it just about a half inch to three quarters of an inch short of the length you want. Now, I want mine to be a little over seven inches. So what I've got is from the end to the end. And of course, you're just now... Um, putting on the beads so you don't have it ended like me but I made mine just about six and a half and then um, I had of course some extra chain still so that I could put my end on and I will show you how to do that with this one but if you're going to make it with jump rings and you're going to have to kind of judge the size of your clasp also the one that I used wasn't that big, so this is how you'll judge your length. Just lay it down, look at it, and see what you need. You can lay out your clasping, no matter what clasping you're using on the ruler also, and figure it out. So now I have my completed strand here, and I am going to go ahead and trim it down a little. Now I don't want to trim it real close. You have to leave some room and these can float around on the bracelet a little bit. They don't have to be tight. So what I'm going to do is, my bracelet might end up a little bit bigger than I want it to, but I'm just going to cut about, so there's about a half an inch left here. Maybe a little less than that. But you want to be able to hold on to it and crimp it. So. Leave yourself a little bit of room. And then you need to pick up your crimp tube into your crimping tool. See if I can get my hands to work. Probably work better if I used my other hand, but that's okay. Okay. So I've got my crimp tube in there, just like I showed you earlier. It's nice and flush, a little bit recessed actually. And then I'm going to pick up my bracelet and I'm going to hold it right at the very end of the beads here. And then I am going to slide my end on. And actually, I'm gonna, while I'm holding it, I'm going to cut it down just a little bit more because it's, it's a little bit more than I need and see if I can rearrange myself again here. So you can judge that also when you pick it up. Just make sure you give yourself enough room to actually move around a little bit. Because when you pick it up, you'll dump the beads off if you're not careful. So I'm just going to hold it like that. And then I'm going to put this in my crimping tube and I'm going to squeeze. And then turn it sideways and squeeze again. And there is my first strand. And I'll go ahead and, whoops, let's get you in here. There's my first strand and I will go ahead and make another one and do it exactly the same way and judge now that I have all my number of beads, I know exactly what I need to do. Make sure I cut it about the same length on the end as I did before and crimp it down. Go ahead and make one more, regardless if you're making a longer one to put on a different type of clasping or a short one to put on your bigger clasping. And this bracelet is going to end up a little bit bigger than I wanted it to, I think. But we're going to find out. Okay, so I have made my two little shorter strands here. These are my two longer ones that I'm going to show you how to connect together, which is jump rings. And then here are my two shorter ones that I'm going to put on this clasp and see how it turns out. I think it's going to be about an eight inch bracelet. So you just have to judge and measure like I showed you um, and make sure that you leave yourself at least a little, a few millimeters to put on your clasp or your little crimp end and so that you have the length that you want. Now, 
I'm going to show you how to do these longer ones. So say you just went ahead and made a couple of strands that these I think are about six inches long. Let's see, maybe a little over six inches with the ends on it. Yeah, they're about six and a half. So this is gonna be about a seven and a half inch bracelet. Then maybe not quite that much. And then I have some six millimeter jump rings. So I'm, I've opened one jump ring here and I'm just going to pick up the ends here and make sure that you have one strand at a time, put them on. Make sure that you have it the same on the other side, that it's not twisted. And then I'm just going to grab my clasping here and drop it on the jump ring. And then I am going to go ahead and close this jump ring. Whoop. Now you can use smaller jump rings too, so that you don't have to have quite as much length. So you can adjust to that. I have about a six millimeter jump ring. It's a little bit big, but that's okay. Drop on my clasping, and then actually close this correctly this time. There we go. And then on this side, I'm just going to open another jump ring I've got three connected together here, and I made a little bit of a, a cute little dangle with a cuboid and a head pin. And I just connected three of them together. And then I'm going to open it. <clears throat> Find the opening on this one. Jeez Louise, Gina. I'm just not very coordinated tonight. Now, I want to make sure I drop on this one first, just so it's in the same order on my jump ring, and they're not twisted, and then I'll drop on this one. And then, I'm going to close this jump ring. And now, I have a very pretty double strand that are close together, like this. So, my beat up little hands, I burnt my wrist, I scratched myself, I scratched myself here, uh, you know. So anyway, I'll put this on in a minute and let you see what it looks like, but that's what that looks like. Now, and it turned out to be yeah, right a little over a seven inch bracelet because I can connect right here on the first jump ring. So it's right about seven inches. And then I'm going to grab these and see what we come up with here. Now I wish I had a smaller jump ring. These are small, but they're not quite as small as I think would look prettier on here. I'm just going to leave my clasping together and I'm going to grab one, a jump ring, and put it on the end of the loop here. And I like to leave two, um, two ended type of clasps together when I very first start connecting. Just so that, I don't know why I just like to. <laughs> so, and then I'm going to put this one on here and close it. Now, I can open this clasp, because it's a fold-over clasp, so find what end opens. Just like that. Pull this off, so you can see what that looks like. And then, <clears throat> I'll just close it somewhat and put it over here. And see, the jump ring attachment, because my jump rings are a little bit bigger, it, there's quite a bit of jump ringy-ish, silverish there. It's not ugly, but eh, could be prettier if they were smaller, but that's okay. We'll just make do. And <clears throat> if you're selling your jewelry and if you end up with a little bit longer length like I did, don't worry about it. Someone is going to be able to wear it. And you want to have a few bigger and smaller pieces in your collection anyway, because everyone's a different size. So, 
let's put the and I can always put a smaller clasp on or whatever so I'll put this one on this side making sure that I don't cross my strands as I do this put them in on the in the correct order here put this one on over here and see how this looks I have some smaller fold over clasps too that I could put one on and just connect both of them in on one loop too. You don't have to have a double loop like this. This is going to hold the strands a little bit further apart. It would probably be prettier with a little bit bigger bead, but I just wanted to see what I could do here because I got these new ones and they're so pretty and I just wanted to play with them because you know, you have to do that. Okay, so there's that. Let me put this on. And it's not horribly big. I mean, it's, it's a little too big, but it's not horrible. And it's actually pretty good. And, and it looks pretty. Ah, I like it. Yep, yep, yep. See, it does fall a little bit into my palm, but not terrible. Yeah, so it's okay. And I like it. It turned out pretty. And I'm going to go ahead and put both, put the other one on and put it on my other wrist that isn't all beat up so that you can see what they look like. But I think they're just really, really pretty. And um, I'll be right back. Okay, so here's what they look like. Now this one's twisted because <laughs> it's on my um, right hand and the left hand is useless. So I asked my mom to put it on and <laughs> she twisted it because she couldn't do it either. I hate these class. Why did you put this on? <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so anyway, that's what that looks like. And, um, normally they're not twisted, but <laughs> it's all good. Love my mommy. And this is what it looks like. So here's this clasping here, all twisted up and put on wrong. And here is the pretty it makes a nice focal in the middle and of course if it twists it's okay because it's all beautiful so this is really pretty and like I said I have a bunch of these little fold over clasps online and if you like them check them out you know whatever I hate pushing my website and that's not what I'm trying to do but I want you to have stuff available to you to make the same things I do if you like them so anyway that's what we've made today let me lay out the necklaces. I don't know if I'm ever going to get these bracelets off to show you again, but we're going to try. And here they are. Now, using these kind of clasps and these little crimp ends and things that I use really brings your jewelry up a notch. It makes it look very professional. Um, these nicer clasps and things just really boost things up. The pretty bail, um, little touches like that. And you can find them fairly reasonably. They don't have to be horribly expensive if you shop carefully. And you can make some really pretty things with this beading chain and the bail and the clasping and these little triangle beads. This is a really classy, really classic type of set and anybody would love to have them. You can make them of any color, of course. I use the color scheming of the treasure box and you can use whatever you want. You can use whatever pendant and so on and so forth. So you can really make some pretty pieces this way. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. We'll see you soon. I've made out of the treasure box, I made a butterfly necklace. Let me show you and I'll put these up. <clears throat> Also, real soon, I've already made the tutorials, so um, I will get them up and ready. But this one I made with some of the stuff in the treasure box. You'll recognize the cubes and the butterflies. And then I made a really pretty purse charm, like this. And I made another one too. What did I do with it? Oh, I don't know. But I used a butterfly on the purse charm on uh, the other one. And I'll show you during the tutorial. So those will be the next things. And then we'll probably call it good on the treasure box. Though there are a few more things we could do. And I may do that too. But anyway, this is what I've made um, today. And we'll, I will be making, I guess, is what I should say. And what I've made today is over here. And... Anyway, we'll see ya. Bye-bye.